everyone. My name is Amanda and this is Olivia and we're here with our founder and board certified dermatologist, Dr. Sandra Lee, to, <laughs> to answer questions all about acne. To start off, we want to just ask you some really basic acne questions. I know before I started working here, I didn't know all the answer to a lot of these questions. Okay. So first things first, who gets acne? Most of us uh, get acne, or if, if you want to define it as just a single pimple at some point in our life. I mean, I, I would actually guess it's like a, a hundred percent. I mean, I, I mean, all of us have had a pimple before, right? And that could be defined as acne. But I mean, I think the statistics say, you know, 85% of people develop acne at some point in their life. Um, but it's a, it's a really common skin condition. I mean, it's probably one of the most common. So it is a really prevalent. I mean, we all have had to deal with it. And I think the main thing is we all have memories of having some big pimple and, you know, it, it affecting our life. What percentage of your patients do you see for acne? I would say in my practice, we definitely see a ton of acne patients. I personally probably don't see as many of them as other people in my practice, other dermatologists, because I, uh, I have been uh, preoccupied with more cysts and lipomas and things like that. And also I, I am more the skin cancer surgeon. So there's things that I specialize in my practice and other people don't do, and more of us do acne. So uh, I don't do as much of that. Uh, but I do really love it. I love my acne patients. Most of them, I didn't talk about this before, but they, most of them, obviously, I think a lot of us know, uh, we suffer the most from it in general in our teenage years, through our 20s. Uh, but then, of course, there's some of us that have acne throughout our lifetime, too. How would an acne consultation usually go? Okay, like uh, I would say uh, the first things that I make sure I ask my patients, I always ask them, is today a good day, a bad day, or a normal day for your acne? That's a really good gauge to figure out with whatever acne that they have, um, you know, how bad is it that, at, that, at that given moment? Because sometimes it gets better and sometimes it gets worse. Uh, I also ask what type of skin a person has, whether they're really oily or they're really dry. I think that's really important in terms of determining what type of treatment is uh, um, best for them. And also we take a good look at the areas that they have acne. So I certainly ask them what body areas because it might just be on their face or it might be on their body too. And you know, they have clothes on. So I'm not necessarily able to see that right away. And I wanna make sure that I've gotten all the areas covered. So it's really that. It's, it's more of a history. You get a history for people. You, you find out what kind of lifestyle they have, because sometimes some of those things can affect their acne. Uh, and uh, you figure out what kind of skin that they have. And uh, also then you do a physical exam. You look at the areas real close and, and see what type of acne they have. So what would you say is your most common advice or recommendation? The things that I uh, consider with treatment is, you know, I'm, I'm going to look at the type of skin that they have and the history that they gave me. And uh, usually a lot of the products that we start with are topical medications, uh, or, and then we might go to oral medications. But usually across the board, we start with uh, over-the-counter or, or topical medications. So we can give prescription uh, medicines in the office, but certainly uh, there are weaker over-the-counter varieties or, or over-the-counter varieties at a lower concentration. What would you say the factors are that lead to acne? It has a lot to do with hormones and a lot to do with genetics. So meaning, meaning that uh, this is why it happens in our teenage years, because that's when our hormones are kind of raging. We ha have a lot more oil production and having to do with testosterone and estrogen and all those kinds of hormones that are sort of surging or a little bit out of whack at this time. So that's usually why we have a bigger breakout during that time. Uh, also, one of the primary reasons that women throughout their life can sort of get acne in this sort of cyclical pattern where around their periods or around menstruation. Um, and also genetics plays a big role. If you have family members, if you have parents who have had bad acne when they were a kid, if they have really oily skin, those kinds of things are a potential indication that you might have similar types of breakouts because you have similar type of skin. I know a lot of people freak out thinking 
what they're eating, like their diet causes acne flare ups and makes their skin really bad. Do you think there's a lot of truth in that? A lot of people think about food and they, and they, you, and they, look at that as a potential reason to cause their acne. And I think a lot of it has to do with the fact that that is something that we might be able to control. You know, you think, okay, well, maybe if I just ate healthier or drank more water or, you know, that kind of thing, it can change my skin. And uh, there is a small level of uh, cause and effect with that. You know, there are people, we do know that, you know, for example, dairy products uh, can uh, exacerbate acne. And some people swear that, you know, certain things, maybe if they eat ketchup or they have a mango or or who knows, something can cause their acne, but there's not really uh, a a strong link to this. Uh, I think it has a lot to do with hormones that are actually put in our food. So a lot of our milk or dairy food is pasteurized and there's a lot of hormones that are put in it. Uh, so that the cows, I, I suppose, produce more and they, and so we get more uh, milk. And so that is one of the reasons that we believe that uh, dairy can promote more acne. If you feel like something is triggering your acne and you notice when you stop it, it helps you, your acne seems better. I mean, I say go for it. Yeah. Do it, of course. But I, I cannot say for sure that that is uh, a direct link. How does a pimple form? You know, a pimple has a lot to do with this um, area of our skin called the pilosebaceous unit. It is the pore that you have. When you see a little pore, that's actually a hair follicle. It doesn't mean that a hair actually grows out of it, but I suppose it has a potential for that to happen. Not saying that it's going to eventually happen either, but there's a, a pore with a hair follicle and an oil gland in there too. And that's what we call the pilosebaceous unit. And it's these pores that can get, um, uh, that's where the oil is secreted out of, obviously. So sometimes it can collect in that area and also debris, dead skin cells um, can collect in the area as well. And so these things, this combination of factors settling in a pore can create a black hair or a white head. Um, The progression of that into something called an inflammatory papule or a pimple is when you have this black head or white head that um, has this perfect environment that bacteria like to get involved. And so they just, the bacteria called P. acnes is, is hanging out on our skin and realize, oh my gosh, this is like the perfect area to sort of grow and thrive. It's nice and warm in here. There's plenty of food. Let me just like uh, live here. So that's when you get these pimples, uh, the red bumps that we know of, that's Technically, to West dermatologists, that's called the inflammatory papule. And so that's when it gets red or painful in that area. And that's where you get this bump that most of us hate. And then what are some treatment options for acne? So I know there's like in-office procedures and then there's prescription medication. So if we could just talk about some of those. Yeah, I mean, there's a whole range of things that you can potentially do. Uh, We know that certain things can help improve acne. So some of them are targeted towards that. Certainly there are topical medications. Uh, Well-known ones are benzoyl peroxide, salicylic acid, uh, even glycolic acid, sulfur, uh, topical antibiotics like clindamycin, um, acne myosin, erythromycin, um, also topical retinols or retinoids are really important and also great for anti-aging reasons too. So over the counter, there's retinol, but prescription wise, there is Retin-A or Tretinoin or Tazerac or Adapalene. There's just a bunch of them. And there's multiple combinations of things too. So, you know, it's really something that you want to find the right uh, range of, of things that you uh, like. And I think it has a lot to do with the oil in our skin. You know, the more oily you are, the more you can kind of tolerate some of these products because a lot of them are sort of designed to help diminish that oil on the surface of your skin. But if we have not very oily skin, it kind of dries us out. And so it scares us away. Um, beyond that, we have more oral medications uh, like oral antibiotics that we use that can help to destroy that bacteria that um, you know creates these pimples. There are products called aldactone 
or spironolactone, these are actually also anti-testosterone pills or anti-hormone pills that you can take that can help to minimize oil production on the skin and also help to treat acne. And then we have uh, isotretinoin, also known as Accutane, which is more like the ultimate treatment. Uh, that is something that is can really help people, especially with severe acne, um, and to resolve it. And, and that's important, not because it's going to threaten your life. It's really important because uh, you don't want to have permanent scarring, and that really can affect you um, physically, but as well as emotionally, and really, you know, affect your daily life. So it's important to treat uh, acne especially if you have really bad acne aggressively, but certainly the vast majority of us tend to have more of a milder or moderate acne, which you might even be able to clear up with topical over-the-counter medications, you know, but like the ones that we've described already. I created this SLMD skincare. I, tr I created an acne system because I knew that I had all these people on social media, on YouTube that were asking me about their own acne. And I knew that they weren't physically able to come see me in person as a dermatologist or also maybe even couldn't see a dermatologist uh, you know in their own in their own world so i really wanted to uh create a product line an acne system that with products that i knew worked as a dermatologist uh, these are products that we recommend to our own patients and uh, i think what's part of this which is really good is that i can sort of i have this um, I sort of have a captive audience a little bit, you know, I have people that are watching my videos that I can slip in a little bit about what, what these things do. And I think when people know what they do, it's really helpful because then they're more willing to use products. And then they're actually going to be really proud of themselves that they did something about this and made their skin better. So uh, I think it's really a good idea to know what some of these products are, these active ingredients in my acne system. Uh, and they're the really the most common products uh, that are of the highest level really concentration of things that we recommend as dermatologists that we can make available over the counter. All right, so, so benzoyl peroxide is really great. It's gonna be great for active acne like those inflammatory pimples. If you can't tolerate it, because sometimes benzoyl peroxide is a little drying, a little more irritating to people, especially if you're a little drier, a great alternative is sulfur. And I particularly like sulfur because it sort of is has this kind of, I don't know, maybe some people don't like it, but I kind of like this medicinal kind of smell too. Like it feels like it's doing something and it does do something. It really helps to clear up acne as well. Um, uh, if you're talking about blackheads and whiteheads, which are really like the precursor of those inflammatory pimples or papules that I talk about, then you really want to focus more on salicylic acid, uh, retinol, these are products that are topical that can really help to exfoliate or even increase cell turnover and help to keep those pores clear so that they don't get cluttered with debris and oil and dead skin cells. And that's the beginning of a blackhead or a whitehead. And then that can lead to those pimples. They have some added benefits too. Like I said, retinol can help with aging, actually can help with fine lines and wrinkles. So it's a great thing for people to start on and continue even through their life. Um, and also salicylic acid is particularly good at helping to lighten brown spots as well. We use it as a chemical peel acid and it's great that way. You want to say hi? Hi. I know. Wait, those are, that's my pajamas. You don't want to see that. <laughs> <laughs>